Welcome to the EKG Guy. If this is your first time, I'm glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. So we are going through our EKG reference guide online that you now have available. If you simply go to this link, enter your email, click submit, you'll get an email with a link that you'll click and then you'll have access here. Okay. Now we are in part A tier and in this lecture we will look at hypothermia. Okay, and this is helpful if you're in the clinical scenario where you have a patient presenting with this so you know what findings you're looking for. Sometimes it could be hard if you're someone that's just over-reading or annotating uh, some of these EKGs without a true clinical context, okay? Um, so we will look at that here in this lecture. If you want to look at some of the other stuff we've gone through, as you can see, there's quite a bit here. Part one, we looked at the general features and P-wave abnormalities that you can expect in such cases, such as atrial enlargement, different types of rhythm, atrial, ventricular, as well as junctional. We looked at, in part three, different types of conduction delay. So first, second, and third degree AV blocks. Uh, part four, we looked at voltage, both left and right ventricular hypertrophy, how to identify access and deviation in the frontal plane. In part five, we looked at interventricular conduction delays, whether it was non-specific or a left or right bundle branch block or left uh, posterior or anterior fascicular block. In part six, we looked at myocardial infarction. Uh, specifically, how do we localize different types of MIs and how do we tell if they're acute or old, okay? In part seven, we looked at some of the ST uh, and T wave and U wave abnormalities that you can see, okay? And now we're making our way through part Eight, okay, and so what you want to do is go and follow along or just follow along on this and you can go back and listen to them Okay, and then if you want our course that's more detailed in books EKG.MD click on the course you'll be able to see that we have a lot of new things coming out that I think you'll enjoy All right, so let's get started Okay, so hypothermia, what EKG features can we expect? Well, when we think of hypothermia, this is when your intrinsic, your internal temperature is down, okay? It's, so things start to slow down. Not only are, is your temperature low, but everything else, especially your electrical activity, starts to have some abnormalities. So what can we expect? Well, this is often seen when the temperature gets around 35 degrees Celsius and below that, okay? And so between 32 and 35, we could tend to think around of mild hypothermia. As it gets lower, you get to the moderate range between maybe 29 and 32 degrees Celsius, and anything below 29 degrees Celsius tends to be more severe. And the EKG features that you tend to see is you can have rhythm abnormalities. Uh, again, things slow down. So you may see sinus bradycardia, okay? As well as maybe you'll see an atrial uh, arrhythmia such as atrial fibrillation with more of a slow ventricular response. You may see a slow junctional rhythm show up and even an AV block, okay? So some things. Now you may also see widening, so prolongation of that PR interval, the QRS interval as well as the QT interval, okay? Now because the patient's cold, they may have this muscle tremor artifacts due to the shivering that they're having, okay? And there's one particular wave that you want to be aware of, and this is the Osborne wave. The Osborne wave um, is what we consider a positive deflection at the J point, okay? It may be negative and leads AVR and as well as V1, okay? But oftentimes this is a positive deflection at the J point and is most prominent in the precordial leads, okay? The amplitude of this tends to be proportional to the degree of hypothermia. And you may also see uh, concomitant ST depression and T wave inversion in some cases. Now, other things that you may see are some ectopic beats, so ventricular ectopic beats, uh, arrhythmias such as ventricular tachycardia, as well as ventricular fibrillation can occur. So let's just take a look here. The main thing I want you to be aware of is that things slow down in this, okay? Whether it's the uh, arrhythmia, okay? All these become bradyarrhythmias, whether it's sinus brady, afib, okay? With the slow ventricular response, you may have a junctional, slow junctional rhythm, okay? So a junctional bradycardia or even an AV block. And then also the intervals tend to get longer, okay? And the main feature here is this Osborne wave, that late upright terminal deflection at the J point, and it increases in amplitude as the temperature declines or goes down. 
And you can see that actually most prominently probably in V4 and V5 and even in V6. So notice it's this right here. Okay, so that tail end that we're seeing occur at the end of the QRS complex. Okay, so notice it there. It's coming at the end. Remember, delta waves, whether it's in a, with an accessory pathway, come more in the beginning of the QRS. This is more that terminal portion, and this is an Osborne or J wave. Okay, that positively upright terminal deflection of the QRS complex near the J point in those leads. Okay, and remember it said if we see it, it could be negative in AVR or V1, maybe not so much present here uh, in this case, but that's one thing to look out for. Otherwise, it'll be positive in the other leads. So this is hypothermia. Remember the degree of how high those J waves get is based on how low the temperature gets, okay? Remember, we tend to consider mild between 32 and 35 degrees Celsius, moderate, okay, hypothermia, maybe between 29 and 32 degrees Celsius, and then severe more is less than 29 degrees Celsius, okay? So as you get colder, you'll have an increase in the J wave amplitude or Osborne wave, okay? So if a patient presents and their temperature is maybe just 36 degrees Celsius, you may not see this, okay? So it tends to be as it, they get colder. So main things to take away here are, again, rhythms. If you see these patients that are coming in cold, they'll have a slower rate. Uh, they tend to have that, okay? If it's AFib and atrial arrhythmia, it's going to be slower, and then their intervals tend to be prolonged. And the last thing is be aware of the ectopic beats, arrhythmias, and these Osborne waves that are characteristic that increase in amplitude as you get colder, as the patient gets colder, okay? Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, 
okay, why we developed this, okay? A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay? You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay? And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself um, 25% off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.